The internet is the culmination of human achievement. Here, information is shared at the speed of light. Voices are thoughtfully listened to. It is wondrously beautiful. Just kidding! The internet is like a Jackson Pollock painting. Paintings that are so chaotic and utterly disorienting, you didn't even realize this painting wasn't a Jackson Pollock piece. This is a Jackson Pollock painting, and it's so disorienting you didn't even realize it was upside down. These days, there are so many effing websites and pages, you need a complex algorithm to wade through all the crap to find the information, dank memes, and freaky deaky pray to god nobody ever finds out you're into Sonic the Hedgehog porn you're looking for. Mamma mia! But there was a time when the internet was much smaller, and much simpler. A time when this... ...was one of the closest things the internet had to a viral video. I want to take you back to that time. Come away with me. To the internet of the 90s. Here are five sites as they appeared in the 90s. The first stop on our journey is Apple's website from July of 1997, a time when Apple was pretty much at its lowest point. A fact illustrated perfectly by this little vignette, Max Unmasked. See Max emote in Starring Apple, with clips and pics galore from Batman and Robin. We have an insatiable appetite for the Mac, says the computer graphics supervisor for BNR, a man who clearly did not want his name shared. Mm hmm. For we will be the only two people left in the world. Yes. Adam and Evil. Yep. Can't think of a better metaphor for Apple at this time than that. Fortunately, July 1997 was also marked by Steve Jobs being named as Apple's chief once more. With his input and the incredible design work of Jonathan Ive and his team, Apple would return to form with the release of the iMac the following year. The website was redesigned too. Here you can see the very first iteration of Apple's charmingly simplistic, kind of pretentious web design. You know what I mean. Each section's title is either like one or two words followed up with one unbelievably condescending sentence like, Pro, creative professionals, meet your match. Or, Go. We rewrote the book on mobile computing, or, whoa, it's okay, you don't have to say anything. Which, over the last 20 years, has evolved into light, years ahead. Of course, I'm, uh, writing, recording, and editing this video on a Mac, so I guess I am being a bit two-faced. That's, that's my new, the 90s kid is being a bit two-faced alarm. Let's see what PBS Kids was up to in February of 1999. Whoa. Good lord. It looks like a kid in a high school web design class just kind of barfed HTML code on their Dell. It's, ugh. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> like this really creepy Zaboomafoo that's staring blankly into my soul. Or this very shoddily cropped big bird in front of a green screen. But it's this bubble that creepily asks, Do you have a dream? That's really drawn my attention. I wanna... I wanna see where this leads. Oh. Oh. I mean, it's not disappointing, I can't say that. I mean, it, it leads to a page that talks about MLK's dream. You know, his famous I have a dream speech. This page leads to a page asking what children's dreams are. And that page leads to another page which has a list of all the rules for dreaming. There are no bad dreams? Okay, wait. What about that one guy whose dream it was to wipe out an entire race of people whom he thought to be inferior to his own, so that his own pure human race could take its place as leader of the world? I am of course referring to Tom Marvolo Riddle, aka... Well, you know who. I bet you thought I was talking about a certain Austrian with a silly mustache, huh? Well, that would be tasteless. And frankly, I care too much about my ad revenue. Let's look at Google for May of 1999. Huh. It's got a... Uh, it's got an exclamation point. Neat. Okay, guys, now we're getting to the site that I was actually really excited to get to. The site that sort of inspired this entire video. 
because Nintendo.com is the site that I visited the most as a kid. You know, when I was over at my grandparents' house, or that literally one friend that had access to the internet back in 1996. Although I am a little concerned because I have neither Netscape 2.0 or above, or Internet Explorer 3.0. I guess I'm just gonna have to plow ahead and hope my Chrome version 59.0 is advanced enough to handle this site. This site might not look like much now, but for 1996, this was actually a pretty darn good looking web design. It's not too simplistic, yet it's clean and easy to navigate. Plus, it has a little bit of that patented Nintendo charm. And as we can see, it looks like Nintendo has always had trouble supplying their new consoles right after launch. I guess that's consolation for all of you looking for a Switch? Hmm. Let's check out the product lab. Got uh, Mario Kart 64, the Game Boy Pocket. That happened to be my first very own Game Boy. Virtually unstoppable, huh? I mean, I guess it's technically true. You, you can't stop what never got going. <laughs> Nintendo didn't even care enough about the Virtual Boy to proofread its product page. That's incredible. Oh man, I would kill to have a denim N64 cap with a suede bill and metal buckle strap. Or a Henley t-shirt. I mean, nothing says comfort like a super heavyweight shirt. Right? Ooh! Shoshinkai 96! Uh, looks like the biggest news was the fact that Zelda 64 was not playable, but it was shown off in video form. And of course, the highly anticipated N64 disk drive that most North Americans have never actually seen in person was there, and that was big news. And the Jolting Pack! Which was wisely renamed to the Rumble Pack, and also premiered there. Okay, let's look at some ADIs from the show. Okay, here's Zelda 64, which looks nothing like the final game, I, I think. I don't know, can you guys actually see anything? Really small. This is Goldeneye. I think. Ah! And here's Kirby's Air Ride, which, despite being playable at last year's show, would not be released until seven years later in 2003 on the GameCube. The last site that I wanted to share with all of you is SpaceJam.com. For the last four sites, I used the Wayback Machine. This site, I just went straight to, because it has not been updated since 1996. I mean, it's a bonus, because that means the website has way less broken JPEGs and broken links than sites that I had to access through the Wayback Machine. It's just funny to me, it's never been updated. Here you can check out sound clips from the movie. Minutes of fun, huh? Look, I added up all the clips and they totaled less than 45 seconds. So I wouldn't say it provides minutes of fun. Unless you factor in the time it would take a 28 or 56k modem to load the clips. Nothing is more fun than waiting almost a minute to hear We need to beat these guys, cause they're talking about slavery. They're gonna make us do stand-up comedy. The same jokes every night for all eternity. We're gonna be locked up like wild animals and then trotted out to perform for a bunch of lowbrow, bug-eyed, fat-headed, humor-challenged aliens. Totally worth it. You can also check out some behind-the-scenes featurettes which include watching Michael Jordan play basketball with green spandex-clad stuntmen, and an interview with producer Ivan Reitman in which he states, Bugs Bunny has always been uh, my favorite animated character. You know, he's a cross between Groucho Marx and Bill Murray and... Ah uh... uh, yes, I too have always felt Bugs Bunny was a mix of Groucho Marx and Bill Murray. You know Bill Murray, the comedic actor who is so monumentally incredible and so monumentally influential, he was inspiring cartoon characters a full decade before his own birth. To be fair, Bill Murray really is that incredible. Magnificent bastard. Everybody, that, that, that was just a quick video about some websites from the 90s. What websites do you want me to visit in a future video? I, I would love to, to do this again. Your comments and likes, they're, they're appreciated. E even the comments that call me a C word. It's just, just nice to be noticed.